If you're willing to pay the massive premiums for the new Rolex Submariner reference 126610LV nicknamed Starbucks or Sermit, I would suggest that before you pull the trigger, maybe also look at the Kermit, the 16610LV. Hello and welcome back to Wine on the Move. In today's video, we continue the series on this channel of comparing Rolex 5-digit references to their 6-digit counterparts. And in today's video, we compared the new Rolex Submariner Starbucks to the Kermit. Shout out to Nigel who was kind enough to come down with his Submariner and a big thanks to James who has helped out with this video in a big way and all the shots that you see of the Kermit have been shot by him. By the way guys, stick around till the end of the video for a giveaway announcement. And now, let's get into it. In 2003, Rolex marked the 50th anniversary of the Submariner with the launch of the reference 16610LV, known to us as the Rolex Kermit. Before the Kermit, the GMT Master Series was the only sports model to have a non-black bezel. But the use of the color in GMT watches served a very functional purpose. So when the Kermit was launched, the enthusiasts weren't so sure about the green bezel. In fact, many saw it as something that had ruined the beloved tool watch aesthetic of the Submariner. And at the time, it was aptly given a less flattering nickname, the Vomit Sub. And though it was discontinued in 2010, the watch has aged well among collectors and is one of the hottest properties when it comes to Rolex 5-digit sport models. But the green bezel black dial colorway has been revived by Rolex through their 2020 release of the 126610LV. Although the green is more subdued than its 5-digit counterpart, it is now the new face of the Rolex Submariner line in green. In order to do a comparison of both these watches, we shall follow the same pattern as the previous videos of the series. We shall look at the case, bracelet, bezel and dial, the movement, and lastly, the price. The case diameter of the new reference is 41mm as all the subs have now increased by 1mm in diameter. The older reference's case diameter is 40mm. Luck to luck of the new reference is 47.6mm and the older one is 47.5mm. The 16610LV is 12.4mm thick and the 126610LV is around 12mm thick. The lug width of the new reference is 21mm and on the Kermit it is 20mm. Both have a 904L stainless steel case and both were watches have brushed finished lug tops and the sides of the cases are polished. Both have screw down trip lock crowns, although the new model has much more prominent crown guards compared to the Kermit that has much smaller crown guards. The water resistance on both these watches is 300 meters. With the 2020 release of their Submariners, Rolex made the most controversial change by increasing the diameter of the case to 41 mm. I have to admit, at first I was disappointed as I hoped for something slimmer than the Hulk which of course released in between the two watches that we are looking at today and had the chunky maxi case. But I have to say, I'm pleasantly surprised that even though on paper it is 1mm bigger, it actually sits slightly sleeker and compact than the Hulk and actually is more closer to the feeling of having a Kermit on your wrist. And the slightly wider bracelet now feels more proportionate to the case. But having said that, the lugs and the overall case still is much smaller on the Kermit. And if you have smaller wrists, the Kermit should be your choice. Both the watches have oyster bracelet, but the quality and clasp vastly vary. The new reference is equipped with an oyster lock safety clasp with glide lock, which was introduced with the Deep Sea in 2008 and added to the Submariner in 2010. It's simple and practical. The glide lock system allows fine adjustment of bracelet length in 2mm increments. On the other hand, the Kermit has the oyster bracelet with the oyster lock clasp with micro adjustment holes on the clasp. Even though this bracelet is not as comfortable as the new oyster bracelet, I do like it, but as an owner of the Rolex Submariner reference 114060, I can say without a doubt that Glidelock is a game changer when it comes to comfort and fit of the watch on your wrist. The extension on the clasp means that after having the bracelet professionally sized, the wearer is able to make adjustments on the fly with ease. It could be to pull the bracelet in a few millimeter for colder weather, the wearer can quickly make adjustments in both directions without a watchmaker. If you're okay with not having the new clasp with its easy adjustments, then look wise, the bracelets are the same and one of the best looking found on any watch and comfort wise they are also one of the best as well. For a smaller wrist I feel one should go for the Kermit and should avoid the new reference. 
The new reference of course marks the return of the green bezel and the black dial combo found on the original Kermit. The shade of green however is visibly darker than the aluminium green on the 50th anniversary. In color it is more closer to the bezel found on the Hulk, possibly the exact same. I was actually surprised by this configuration being released this year considering it is not an anniversary year for the brand or the model. But I am not complaining, although some have raised questions as to why Rolex is going back to a colorway released in 2003. Having hands on with the new Starbucks, I can tell you that it's actually such a different green that has me convinced that this was a good move by Rolex. Regardless of color, it remains the gold standard for dive bezels, being highly legible and easy to grip with tactile clicks that demonstrate a sense of luxury and attention to detail. The older Comet having an aluminium bezel is technically far inferior than the ceramic bezels, but a lot of people just love the aluminium bezels more because of its aesthetic and the color change that happens over the years adding character to the watch. Both watches have a sapphire crystal and a cyclop lens date window at 3. The 50th anniversary model also saw the introduction of the maxi dial to the Submariner. Having made its debut on the Yachtmaster in 1991, the dial featured larger hands and indices, further improving the legibility and giving a subtle nod to the earliest examples of the sub. It is worth mentioning that there were several variations during the 7 year run of the reference 16610LV. In fact, the collectors have noted 9 different generations of the Kermit. These include revision to the case, the bezel and the text on the dial. Most are minor changes unless you know exactly what you're looking for. With the Starbucks, the dial continues to be a maxi dial with larger luminous plots for markers that are filled with the brand's highly legible blue chroma light. It shares the same black gloss finish from the previous generation as well. But a subtle cosmetic difference can be noted. Between the Swiss made notation, you'll now find the Rolex crown sandwiched in between signaling the latest generation of movements arriving in the Submariner line. When it comes to the dial, both the watches are very similar other than just the size of all the components and some extra features. With regards to the bezel, it really depends on whether you prefer scratch resistance or a bezel that with age might change to a distinctly different color. The Rolex Kermit 50th anniversary uses the automatic caliber 3135. It is an extremely reliable caliber. It features 31 joules and operates at 28,800 beats per hour with 50 hours of power reserve. But this year, the 3135 has been retired. The new Submariner date models are now outfitted with the latest in Rolex technology. The caliber 3235 certified as both a Swiss chronometer by COSC and tested again a second time by Rolex to ensure it meets their superlative chronometer standard of plus or minus 2 seconds per day, same as the Kermit. What separates the Caliber 3235 from the previous generation is that it features the new Chronogy Escapement and Parachrome Hairspring. The new Escapement is in part why this Submariner has the longest power reserve of any Submariner model. 70 hours. The geometry of the new Rolex Chronogy Escapement improves the efficiency of the key components by 15%. Almost half of the increased power reserve of the Caliber 3235 is down to the Escapement itself. Movement-wise, the new reference is superior, as would be expected, but the 3135 movement of the Kermit is very capable as well, as proven by its long run. The 126610LV retails for US dollars 9550, but it's almost impossible to get it at retail. If you're willing to pay the premium, the current market price is around 20,000 US dollars. The 16610LV on the other hand being discontinued, you would only be able to buy from a reseller and the market price right now is around US dollars 16 to 17,000. What will happen to the value of the original Kermit now that a bigger version with a modernized ceramic bezel and updated movement has been introduced? Well, the Starbucks does not have the claim of being first. The 16610LV being the original as well as having the case profile of the older models is true to the classic case design and with a distinct aluminum bezel. As with all Rolex steel sport models, both the new and the olds will continue to have high demand and premiums on the secondary market. But if you're tempted to pay the current premium on the new Starbucks, I would urge you to wait as the market is just crazy right now and the value is inflated. Give it a couple of months and it will start to go down at least by a little. If you ask me which is a better investment, though we shouldn't look at our watches as investments, I have to say the Kermit as it's a watch that was the OG that shocked the Rolex fans and also being an anniversary piece, it's more desirable. I always feel that the premiums of any current Rolex sport models don't make sense as the scarcity is not real and the production run would be long and over time the market will have loads of it. But a watch being discontinued and being an anniversary watch in the long run will, in my opinion, increase in value. Let me know in the comments down below, which of these two watches would you pick 
And are you happy that Rolex went back to a similar colorway? By the way, guys, I'm giving away one of these two Horus straps, either a camo rubber strap or a black rubber strap. The winner will decide. All you have to do to enter is subscribe to the channel, like this video and comment down below. Also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Winding on the Move. Until next time, cheers.